Hello, I'm George from Ireland. So here I am in Castletown Bear, um, on the Bear Peninsula in uh, Cork, Ireland. So this is this is the main town, or in the Bear Peninsula, there are only um, only about 800 people live in the town. Perhaps a further thousand in in, in the catchment area. So uh, sometimes it's called Bear Haven because there's a little harbour here, quite an important uh, fishing port. Um, but I've heard that only large-scale fishing only began in the 1950s. Obviously, a lot of people, people still farmers, mainly of sheep, because there's quite thin soil, many boulders and bogs and so on. So not excellent for arable farming around here. Not that I know anything about um, farming. Uh, anyway, so the name is because there was a Spanish princess bearer many centuries ago who came to, to this area. And indeed, there was, there was a boat called the Princess Bearer used to ply Bantry Bay, taking passengers from here to Bantry Bay, which is obviously, sorry, to Bantry, which lends its name to Bantry Bay. Well, we'll have a look at Bantry Bay in a moment. So we're on the square in uh, Castown Bear. This, um, the main square of the town, well, the only square really. Um, and there are plenty of pubs. Remember 30 years ago, there were about a dozen pubs here, but not so many of them are around because more stringent drink driving rules and uh, anti-smoking rules, higher taxation, coronavirus, that's forced some of them out of business, but uh, those that exist are more into, more into serving food than they used to be. So there's plenty of um, uh, seafood here and much of the seafood you'll find in the English market in Cork actually comes from here. So um, we're almost as far from Dublin as you can be in Ireland. Obviously you can get a bit further down the Berra Peninsula to Allahees and so forth, Erhan. Um, anyway, oh well, look at that tourist office. So we've all, all got, got bilingual signs that we're not in the Gwaeltacht. If, you, if you're not Irish, you won't realise that means the, the Irish-speaking area. And anyway, here we are by the uh, Quondam St. Peter's Church, as is for the Church of Ireland. <laughs> um, so it closed as a place of worship about 10 years ago. There have been virtually no Protestants left uh, in the peninsula. But I mean, religiosity it has sort of visibly declined for the Catholic majority as well. Um, someone I know actually went to this church one Sunday, way back about 1997, and there were eight uh, worshippers. Um, but then it was taken over by the tourist office, but haven't done much with it. I did go into it years ago when it was, it was still functioning uh, as, as, as a church. And there were some other Church of Ireland churches in the peninsula, like um, near Adragol that was um, demolished years ago. Um, so, and this, um, you couldn't get into this years ago, though the wall was kind of high. But, the, but they, they removed it. Um, the Sacred Heart is the Catholic Church in the town, which is very much functioning. But even its uh, congregation has thinned a bit because, you know, we're, we're not as religious as we used to be, as that abortion referendum result in 2008 uh, would demonstrate. Um, I remember like the divorce referendum in the 80s, when it was voted down, broadly speaking, Dublin voted yes, the countryside voted no. And obviously in 1994, it, it very narrowly passed. And um, anyway, more, more signs of the times. So there's some hotels which have gone bust, which then been reanimated under new management, gone bust, come back again, and so on. So many things uh, change hands, change management quite frequently. Now here's another sign of the times. Look at this family resource center with a big gay pride flag there. You wouldn't have seen that in the 90s because we only decriminalized homosexuality about 1994. And of course, our previous Taoiseach, Dr. Leo Varadkar is an out homosexual which would have been unthinkable uh, a generation ago so there really has been a revolution in social attitudes but perhaps i'm not talking about uh cast down bear um itself uh enough so yeah we're beside battery bay which obviously leads onto the atlantic ocean um and many people are employed in the fishing industry as a fish uh, processing factory um, and what can I say? So it's, it's much more multi-ethnic and cosmopolitan than you might think for somewhere that's uh, um, quite small and uh, quite remote because there's a Spanish community here. There certainly was a Spanish consulate. There's been a German and Dutch community since the 70s of these rat race refuseniks. And what else? There have been um, uh, African people here as well. I'm not sure from which country. There was a Pakistani guy who was working here years ago. Um, so uh, there are people from Great Britain as well. There's a Buddhist center not too far away. So uh, more of an eclectic mix than you might first uh, um, imagine. And then there are certain names really dominate the town, like you know Harrington and O'Sullivan. Do you think of famous sons of Castletown Bear? Um, there was uh, one of those guys, guys who was Lord Mayor of Dublin around about 1902. And when King uh, Edward VII came to Dublin, um, 
as part of his coronation celebrations, this uh, very hardline chap, I think it was a Harrington, Lord Mayor, refused to meet him because he was a, an ultra-nationalist. Whereas the Home Rule Party generally say, okay, we, we, they would still accept the monarch in 1902. And yeah, this, um, this garage over here, and it's got right up the top AOH, as an ancient order of Hibernians, uh, specifically Catholic nationalist organizations, scarcely exist in Ireland more, I anymore. It's this big, bigger thing in Dublin. That was kind of the Catholic nationalist equivalent of the Orange Order. It was never as strong amongst nationalism as the Orange Order once was amongst unionism. Um, but I don't think it exists here anymore. But I have seen photos of, of Castan Bear of over a uh, hundred years ago and the ancient order of Hibernians parading and so on. There's a cross there dedicated to men and women of the, the Bear Haven Battalion who fought against the Crown Forces from 1916 to 1920 um, to 1923 and obviously against the Free State Army in the Civil War. Um, so, mm, well, I mean, fair, maybe fairly evenly split here between Finnefoyle and Fine Gael. The chairman of Cork County Council of the late 90s was from here. And um, who, who are other notable figures? Yeah, the guy who worked in the post office, he was elected to Doyle Aaron not so long ago. McCarthy's Bar features on a, on a, a book front cover called McCarthy's Bar. And uh, was uh, later owned by the late Dr. Aidan McCarthy, um, who was imprisoned by the Japanese in the Second World War. He was, he was a doctor in the Royal Air Force, as the British Air Force, wrote a doctor's war about it. It's just an unputdownable, but actually quite unemotional <laughs> account of a very harrowing time. He said his Christian faith sustained him through many a dark hour, and he witnessed absolutely horrific things, but somehow maintained his composure and his sanity. I would have given up the, the, the will to live much sooner. Um, well, Standish O'Grady, the celebrated writer of the late um, 19th, early 20th century, he was from here, lived at the Glebe, which was the um, Church of Ireland clergyman's house. Last time I checked, it was owned by a German judge. Because there was no Church of Ireland clergyman in the town since shortly after the Second World War. Obviously, the, the Royal Navy was here as the British Navy on Bear Island. They had a little bit of the mainland up until 1938, one of the treaty ports. Um, so, uh, yeah. I mentioned the Sacred Heart Church, I'm about to show it to you, constructed in, in, in um, uh, 1912. Behold it yonder, um, built on the site of an earlier chapel. Because in those days, Catholic churches they were usually called chapels because the Church of Ireland said, only we can call our place of worship uh, a church. So the rest of us had to call it a chapel, even though it was actually quite big. But this is definitely ch a church now. And then you can see that the school was behind it. And in there, you'll see busts of the various bishops of Kerry on the colonnade, because although we're in County Cork, we're part of the diocese of Kerry, ecclesiastical and, and political boundaries don't quite coincide. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. Oh, well, John Sullivan, he was one of the signatories of the American Declaration of Independence. So he's born in New Hampshire to parents from Castletown Bear. So, you know, Bear could, can claim him somewhat. And I can't think of anyone of, of, of a particular note from down here. Well, excuse my ignorance if I've left somebody out. So anyway, that's sort of a whistle-stop tour of Castletown Bear. I'll show you the, um, where the, the ferry goes from. We'll look out to the sea. I mean, it's perhaps surprising that you know, not a lot of houses, fa houses fade onto the sea. Um, so there's a ferry from here to, to Bear Island several times a day. Bear Island being um, the country's largest island. Um, anyway. So this is where it goes from. And in 1993, there was a terrible accident when there was a lorry going over to, to Bear Island and unfortunately caused the, the, the ferry to capsize and several people were drowned. Quite a few fishermen, unfortunately, have lost their lives at sea. So the Department of the Marine tries to improve safety. And I, th I think it has had a very considerable success over the past few years. Um, yeah, so anyway, that is Bear Island right over there. There's a cross um, at the highest point of the island. You probably can't make it out with the, with the naked eye. Erected for the mayor in the year of 1950, as in a particular year of devotion to the Blessed Virgin, because, you know, Ireland, we prided ourselves on being um, you know, the most uh, zealously Catholic country um, in the world. And so something that we could really be the best at. But uh, how times have changed, people are no longer saying it's Holy Catholic Ireland. Farewell to all that. I mean, Leo Varadkar saying he was pleased that the influence of the, of the church in public life has diminished very appreciably. And that's one thing that always surprises me, the RNLI, as a Royal National Life and Institution. You can see the crown there. So that's actually a British organization. And uh, he most, <laughs> quite nationalists down here, most, they most would say, oh, we can't have anything royal or republic, no way. 
So um, almost a century after we left the United Kingdom, the RNLI still exists, but I think most people are scarcely aware of its link to the UK. Not that it's controlled by the British government, it's more of a charity. But there is some Irish equivalent, like exclusively Irish equivalent. I don't know why that hasn't taken over. So yeah, here you see the lifeboat. And then pubs are often collecting for the RNLI. Um, and various fishing boats um, over there. So it can be quite well paid, but uh, limited days they can, they can, they can um, go out to sea. And you see, see Hungry Hill beyond. People say it, it, was, it was named that because of the famine. Um, oh yes, and you see this blue building behind me? You might see the Spanish flag on that, and that is the Spanish consulate. Astonishing that there's a Spanish consulate here, but Spanish fishermen were coming here in inconsiderable numbers. Um, and indeed, there, there were fishermen from Russia and other former Soviet countries here in the 90s used to come here about Easter time in great numbers. I think they weren't actually fishing, perhaps they were purchasing fish from local fishermen, processing them and then sailing home where they were sold. So uh, that is a Castle Tamber, um, a very unusual and quite, quite characterful place. So anyway, please follow me on Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram and so forth. Toodaloo.